Thank you so much, choir, for your kindness. Thank you, everyone that has come to celebrate Esther and Anthony today. We are honored to have you in this service. And for Esther and Anthony, we are so proud of you. Right, friends, according to Genesis chapter 24 and verse 58, it says, And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. I would like to ask Esther, are you ready to leave your parents and go with this man? like to have the brother-in-law show up and come and hand over Esther and I'm going to ask Anthony to walk gently and they will meet halfway with Esther's brother and they'll hand over Esther to you. the rest of the church if there's any man or woman that has a reason as to why these two people should not be joined together in holy mat matrimony let him or her say it now well or else you will stay quiet for the rest of their days <laughs> Right, Esther and Anthony, no one seems to have reservations. And I want to believe that also heaven condones your marriage today. It does agree. <laughs> Amen. Right. I want to um, turn to Esther and Anthony. Do you have any reason between the two of you that you think, hmm, I don't think I really want to do this for real any reason okay great friends Anthony and Esther say there's no reason hallelujah we should have had a praise song to this effect because that's really powerful <laughs> amen but I know in the interest of time um, we'll do a lot of singing Esther and Anthony in your marriage right <laughs> right Right, I would like to um, move on to the bridal team, the, the maids, the matron, the best man and the groomsmen. I would like to say a very big thank you and ask you to gently sit down, just take your seats. Thank you so much. And I think at this point also the rest of the congregation can sit down and we'll just keep it with Anthony and Esther. 
you'll just bear with us. I know this is your wedding day. Um, and we'll do a bit of reading. I would like to make a few remarks on love and marriage. When God made man and woman and ordained marriage, he made it to be a holy institution. He never intended for marriage to be a, a trial run. But in the Bible, however, God has given us a powerfully effective marriage manual and God's word gives us a certain pattern for a successful and fulfilling marriage that works. The Apostle Paul gives us a specific insight on the marriage relationship in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, all through to 33. And if we will read, it says in verse 21, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be their own be to their own husbands in everything and husbands love your wives even as christ has loved the church and has given himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having a wrinkle or any such thing but it should be holy and without blemish so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loves his wife loves himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but actually nourishes and cherishes it even as the lord the church for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bonds for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and they shall be joined unto his wife and they shall be one flesh this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let everyone in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverenceth her husband. Amen. Right, you guys are making a home, right? The home needs to be built on love. The home built upon love Love's virtue is actually beautifully portrayed in the 13th chapter of First Corinthians. Love is very patient and kind. It's never jealous or envious. It's never boastful or proud. Never haughty or selfish or rude. God designed marriage to be a nurturing place of shelter. It's a sandpaper on one side and silk on the other. It's abrasive on the other side and yet comforting on the other marriage is a test kitchen of the gospel it is a microorganism of god's plan for the world it is a little world of two people where dying and resurrection takes place and where everything is redeemed marriage is not just a human convenience or a go but sorry or a God-sanctioned way of meeting the needs of flesh or an enjoyable method of populating the planet Earth. Marriage is an oath to God that with at least one person in the world, each of us will see his kingdom realized. Anthony and Esther, marriage is a commitment that you will have to seek God's face to see your mate's sickness healed the scars that life has actually inflicted on you both wiped away and the bent parts of your personalities straightened marriage is a pledge to work for redemption in each other's lives that is precisely what christ does for his church and that is what he asks us to do for each other for a child of God not to understand the significance of marriage and to uphold the sanctity of it, it is to miss the whole point of eternity. That sounds tough, Anthony, right? <laughs> yeah, Esther, it's a journey. <laughs> right. 
Now time allowed to exist so that the bride can actually be made fully ready, beautified, tried and proven, worthy of the great price that was paid for her. Then time will cease and the love and and the beloved, sorry, the love and the beloved will be joined together forever. Anthony and Esther, you have both declared that you have received Jesus as your savior and you have followed him in water baptism. Okay. You have made him Lord of your lives. Guys, did you hear that? Okay. Okay, you have both completed the required study of marriage through the Christ Heart Preparation Course, and you have assured us that that's your desire to have a marriage built and a home that is actually based on the teaching and principles of God's word, having a full understanding of both the privileges and the responsibilities of marriage that you will please um that you'll be ready to make your vows. Am I right? Okay. So we're going to get into the marriage vows now. I think I'll need the best man and the matron. We will have Anthony make his vows first. Anthony. What are the vows you want to make before God? I, Anthony, promise God that I will love him with all my heart, mind, and spirit. I promise that my love for Nyabolo Esther will be second only to my love for God. I promise to love my wife as Christ loved the church, even as my own body. I promise that I will leave my father and mother and live only to my wife. I promise that I will be the spiritual leader in my home and that I will be a priest and a prophet for my home. I promise God that I will always treat the whole Esther with courtesy and respect. I promise that I will remain married to Napolo Esther as long as I live. <laughs> It's your time now. What promise do you want to make to God? I, Napolo Esther, promise God that I will love him mm. with all my heart, mm. mind, and spirit. I promise that my love for Okiro Anthony will be second only to my love for God. I promise to be submissive to my husband, even as the church is subject to Christ. I promise God that I will respect my husband. I promise that I will be a woman of prayer and the word of God. I promise that I will encourage my husband in the Lord and that I will follow Okiro Anthony as he follows the Lord. I promise God that I will be kind, gentle, and gracious to Okiro Anthony. I promise to be sensitive to his needs and feelings. I promise to be considerate of my husband in everything. I promise God that I will remain married to Okiro Anthony as long as I live. Thank you so much, friends, for making those promises to God. I pray that the Lord will give you grace to honor those promises to him. Amen. Right. I would like us to hear your promises together to God. Okay. Esther, are you good? Yes. yes. Okay. You can start, Anthony, together. We, we promise to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We promise to be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to let our requests be made known unto God. We promise that we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We promise to present our bodies to God as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Him. We promise God that we will live by the law of love, never repaying evil, but always responding by love in every situation. Wow.
Amen. Um, now, Esther and Anthony, I'd like you to make vows to each other. I'm going to ask the matron if she can help with the flower. Or we can put it here? Okay. It's a lovely flower. <laughs> Apollo Esther, I receive you as my wife. I consider you to be God's gift to me. I promise you that I'll commit myself to your happiness and to the fulfillment of high, your highest dreams and to your usefulness in God's kingdom. I promise that I'll love you, honor, trust, and serve you in every situation. I promise that I'll be true and loyal to you as long as I live. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Kiror Anthony, I receive you as my husband. I consider you to be God's gift to me. I promise you that I will commit myself to your happiness and to the fulfillment of your highest dreams and to your usefulness in God's kingdom. I promise that I will love, honor, trust, and serve you in every situation. I promise that I will be true and loyal to you as long as I live. Right, um, Anthony and Esther, Ruth says of Naomi that do not urge me to leave you, that your God will be. At this moment, we'd like to do an exchange of the rings, and can we have the rings? Okay. Okay, Pastor Chirigo, would you like to come and pray over these rings, sir? Anthony and Esther. Lord, we dedicate these rings unto you. We separate them from other rings sold in shops and markets and on the streets. These rings will not just be rings, Lord, but there will be a constant reminder to Esther and Anthony. And to every man and woman who will be seeing Anthony and Esther putting on these rings, may their marriage grow. May their life continue to rotate around them to the glory of your name. We pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Right, so Esther gets the big ring and Anthony gets the small one. Okay. Would like to get to that place of putting a ring. Anthony, you will go first putting a ring on Esther's finger. With this laying, I seal my vows, I seal my love for you, mm. and I make a covenant with you. I pledge my life and love to you, all that I have and all that I am. Mm. I give you all that I am, I give you. I will protect you and love you all the days of my life. I make this covenant with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Those are really beautiful rings. Eh? Okay, now it's Esther's turn. Okirol Anthony, with this ring I seal my vows. I seal my love for you and I make a covenant with you. I pledge my life and love to you. All that I have and all that I am, I give you. I will protect you and love you all the days of my life. I make this covenant with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This time you're wondering why on earth is that veil still on? Because <laughs> one man got himself in trouble for unveiling people. <laughs> Jacob took home just about the wrong wife. 
but we don't want Anthony to get himself in that trouble. <laughs> right, at this time, I um, would like to get Anthony ready to unveil Esther. And the reason why she has been unveiled all this time is that she has not been married. And that's why she's been covered. But now that she's going to get married with the exchange of the rings, now Anthony is going to become her brand new veil. I'm going to ask Anthony to begin to unveil and see whether this is actually the Esther he's been talking about. more. I do want to embarrass him, but on demand, Anthony, I'm going to ask you to do what brave men do, strong and courageous. You have done fabulously well, Anthony. Thank you. That was very courageous. Okay. Right now, we would like to move on to the next stage. We'd like um, Anthony and Esther to sign, to sign their certificates. I'm going to kindly ask if any of the parents are here and the pastors, Anthony's parents, um, Esther's parents, kindly come and we just pray over this wonderful couple. Please do lay your hands on them. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to have parents with us. And I want to trust that your parents are going to bless you. Reason why many marriages lasted in the Old Testament is because they had a blessing. Paul tells Timothy, don't forget those hands that were laid on you. And we don't take the notion of laying on of hands lightly. I pray that you'll be kind as you lay your hands on these beautiful people. Come and pray over this. Pastor Marizi, can you please come and lead the prayer for Esther and Anthony as they start on this delicate journey. I'm going to ask that you... Okay, let me move away so I give you space. <laughs> you pray over them. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Come on, stretch your hands to the couple. Let's bless them. Parents, feel free to touch them. Feel free to touch them and declare a blessing over their lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for Anthony. We want to thank you for Esther. Father, we thank you for the journey that they have started this day. 
Lord, we declare a blessing upon their lives, O King of Glory. We pray, O Lord, that they are going to have a wonderful marriage, O King of Glory. They are going to have a fruitful marriage in the name of Jesus. Father, let this marriage be a gospel to men, a King of Glory. Father, let this marriage bear fruits and fruits that are going to last in the name of Jesus. Father, let these give glory to your name. Let this marriage, O King of Glory, bring glory to your kingdom, O King of Glory. Mukama, we thank you, Lord, for the children that you're going to give them, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the houses you're going to give them, O King of Glory. We thank you for the life and the divine health, O Lord, that you're giving to them, O King of Glory. Father, I want to thank you, for they are going to walk in a marriage that is going to be exemplary, that your name is going to be glorified in their midst, O King of Glory, that your name will be the pillar on which they are going to anchor their marriage, O Lord, that you take preeminence in their marriage, O King of Glory, that you'll be at the center of this marriage, O Lord, that nothing, O Lord, will come in their midst, O King of Glory, because you are going to be in their midst, O Lord. You are going to be directing the affairs of their marriage, O Lord. King of glory, I pray, O Lord, that they never lose that place, O Lord, of hearing from you, O Father. That they will not lose that place of receiving instructions from you, O God. That this marriage, O Lord, that is ordained by you, O King of glory, will last in the name of Jesus. Father, we exalt your name and we glorify your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful name. Amen. believe that it's a wonderful gift we have seen that through scripture <laughs> the magi came to Jesus when he was born and they brought precious things gold, whatever so the baby Jesus would start and we know all through scripture that every time marriage is starting we need to give something as in this country it was called in Tandikwa by the president of this country but even in church would like to give it to this wonderful couple as they start. We're going to do that really fast. Um, for some of you, it will be an opportunity to say hi and congratulate Esther and Anthony on this milestone. And the choir, please. <laughs> E joke deke, tikolo enga twana. E joke deke, e alama, e alama. E joke deke, tikolo enga twana. E joke deke. Well 
Osman has been quick to keep the one for the government of Uganda. <laughs> and whatever that means. <laughs> but anyway, okay. here from God. two or three are gathered in your name you too will be there with us and therein lies our confidence that Lord we are not orphans we are not alone for you are with us and because you are with us we will not fear we exalt you we honor you Lord for it's in Jesus name we have prayed and wait on your word amen 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 thank you Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Esther and Anthony, congratulations. I want to <laughs> I want to send this song, commend this song to you. <laughs> and anybody can sing. We actually will ask if people can stand and we just sing this song <laughs> in honor <laughs> of <laughs> Esther <laughs> and Anthony as we commend them to the Lord. <laughs> Esther and Anthony Anton, if you want to sit down, it's okay. It's a worship song to the Lord, but we just want to commend you into the hands of God. Tim, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Amen. Today is a very special service. <laughs> we don't have brides many times. <laughs> to commend this song to you guys and, and trust that the Lord will uphold you as you walk this journey.
them. They need not fear. We bless you and honor you. And today as we share the word with them, we pray that you will cause it to come alive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please do have your seats. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Anthony's parents. I don't know. Thank you so, so much for taking care of Anthony, for giving birth to him and watching him. We live in tough times. Thank you. And I would like to say a very big thank you to Esther's parents. As thank you. Thank you. I want to believe that this takes a lot of God's grace. To raise up such a beautiful girl and you know bring her in the presence of God I believe you dedicated to you dedicated her to God in the beginning and even now you're doing it again thank you very much thank you and to the friends of Esther and Anthony, thank you very much. You have proved a point of loyalty to this friendship. I know. Thank you. Please do clap for yourself. <laughs> Amen. And I would like to say a very big thank you to Bishop. In your absence, he had loved so much to come and be a part of your wedding. But for some reason, he hasn't made it yet. I don't know how long you're going to be here, but I would like to think maybe before you go back, you may be able to see him. He does send his genuine love and he prays for you that you'll have a great marriage. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Right. Now, marriage. I want to think for Anthony and Esther that you've had time to prepare. We do live in times where people take a lot of time to prepare for marriage. I'd rather for the wedding. And sometimes they don't put as much effort in preparation for the marriage. And yet the marriage actually is the big deal. <laughs> and today it's just going to be a reminder for you that we will point you to God. And the reason why we can confidently point you to God is that we have confidence that with God as your help, your marriage will work. Your marriage will work. I know you've read the tabloids, you've read the, I don't know, stories or even social media. And you've been told that marriage is just one of those things. And it doesn't really, really matter that much. And some people even will tell you, ah, oh, you can actually walk in and out. You can divorce if you want. But our prayer is that your story will not be one of the statistics that is being written about. And it's from that premise that we want to commend you into the hands of the original designer of marriage. That if God be the one that started marriage, and if it be his idea, that he will enable you to walk victoriously on this journey. I pray you'll have an understanding that it's, marriage is not just to live happily. <laughs> but there's a purpose. 
There's a purpose as to why you get married. Um, and this we see in scripture. It is not made up. It is God's idea. Malachi chapter 2 Malachi and verse 15. Okay, great. It's up here. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 15, But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the Spirit? And why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously with the wife of his youth. Bible Antonia Anthony and Esther. And I want to believe those of us that are already married as well. And those of us that are not yet married. One of the purposes of marriage is that we'll be able to raise godly offspring. And that little um, passage the prophet Nabi. Malachi, Malachi speaks using the analogy of marriage. But I want to believe that even greater than that is to have a union with God. That you know, you start with God and as you start with God it is not just about you but it's actually going to use you to raise godly offspring. And these godly offspring could be your biological children, people that you've adop adopted along the way, or in the different you know, communities where you'll be working. Our prayer is that as men and women look at you, they will see God in you. And they will want to become like you. Then you will have a generation behind you. And it will be an Anthony and Esther generation. Because that's the mind of God. His heart is that many will be added onto his kingdom. As they look at you. That those that were hurting, they will find healing as they look at you. Because you will speak words of healing. You will speak words of encouragement. You will speak words of it is possible as the Lord enables you because you have an understanding of the purpose as to why you're coming together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the other purpose is to take care of your family. I pray Esther and Anthony that as you get into this brand new experience, this brand new zone, you will not forget your family. Amen. Amen. A word of counsel, a hand of health will be much appreciated. Will be much appreciated. And it is in the mind of God. And then Paul writes to Timothy, his first letter, chapter 5 and verse 8. And he affirms this particular aspect. Chapter 5 and verse 8. Okay. All right. Great. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is even worse than a non-believer. Amen. Now the scripture has said, if a man does not provide for his own, did it say that? Hello? Let's do this together. If a man does not provide... 
If a woman does not, it seems to be putting us all together. We are in it together. Amen. Mm. And for you, Anthony and Esther, you could have been told by some people that it's only the man that provides. Oh, it's only the virtuous woman that provides. I pray that we will not be caught in a place where we misconstrue scripture. Because scripture is not for personal interpretation. It is the word of God. It is a standard. It tells us if anyone does not provide for his own. Especially for those of his household. Hey, Paul says that one is even worse than an unbeliever. In other words, both men and women are expected to collectively provide. Am I I helping someone? Amen. Amen. And I want to trust that um, in one way or another, both Anthony and Esther will be providing for each other. And for their parents and friends Amen. and family. Amen. Amen. Because that's the mind of God. And that's the purpose of marriage. That you look after one another. Amen. 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 I missed the Luganda version. I had people laughing and then I was thinking, hmm. <laughs> okay, but I know Pastor Chirige can be quite hilarious. <laughs> Amen. Um, <laughs> told you, told you. <laughs> I needed him for an interpreter today, Esther, don't worry. <laughs> Amen. We somehow just saw the Lord bring him, so we said, whoa, how nice. <laughs> God in his sense of humor. He brings people that kind of like are the opposite. Just so they can help each other. <laughs> you have sandpaper here. <laughs> and then you have silk here. <laughs> Actually the sandpaper is supposed to make some rough edges. Proper. So that it can get to that place of being <laughs> My prayer is that you people will be able to find that fine place where you get yourselves better. Amen. 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 And we want to believe that as you follow through these intents of God, you will be able to enjoy the benefits of marriage as you carry on the responsibility. I don't know why, but for some reason, the Bible <laughs> tends to give a very strong um, support to men. So they can appreciate the beauty of marriage. Psalm 128 shares about the benefits of marriage. And he says, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and who walks in his ways. Everyone. And then when we go and he say, let's keep going. He says, when you eat the labor of your hands, it shall be well with you. Verse 3. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. And I'm thinking, but he started off by saying, blessed is everyone. But here, he seems to put the focus on 
the man. And I'm thinking, is everyone a man? You know, you've heard people saying, I know some people wonder and they say it is it men who benefit more. It is men that seem to benefit. I was, I was, I was, but actually, everyone should benefit. The Bible says that your wife shall be but a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. And your children like olive plants all around your tree. We pray for you, Anthony and Esther, that your children shall be like olive plants around your table. That they'll bring you joy. They'll bring you smile. Verse 4. It says, Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. I want to believe that even for you, Esther, as you fear Esther, the Lord, this is your promise too. That your children will not be counted in the statistics of those that are wasted. That mental health disturbances will not be their portion. That societal issues will not be their issue. They will not be drug addicts. None of your children should be found to be leading a wasted life as you serve the Lord. I know there is a lot, and I know for any parent in this day, you want to hide your child in the Lord so that they don't come out as horrible people. The Lord is still willing and ready to have our marriages work as long as we let him be at the center of our marriages. My prayer is that we'll take on the mind of God as we consider marriage. The word of God is still powerful to save our marriages and our lives as well if we are willing to trust him. I don't want to take this any further. I want to believe that one word to a wise man is good enough. And I want to believe that the Spirit of God is well able to minister these truths to you. I want us to just take off time and just commit our lives to God. I believe today is not just for Esther and Anthony, but to have a consideration of God work in our lives. That he would come and meet you and minister life to you. For those of us that had lost hope, that he will renew your hope. For those of us that had lost confidence in the systems around us, in what marriage is, I pray that the Lord will give you the grace to believe one more time. Because he's a good God. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much for this afternoon. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us to reflect on marriage and yes. your purpose for marriage. Yes, Lord. We just want to pray, oh God, that of the things that have been difficult and complicated for us, oh God, you will help us by your word. For you have taught us that unless you build a, a city, we'll labor in vain if we try to. 
And unless you guard it, oh God, we labor in vain if we try to guard it all night. Father, for Anthony and Esther, they're getting married in tough times. But we know that they have a tough God by their side. You are God that is able to go above the limitations, to go above the barriers, oh God. May you carry them on your wings, oh God, and help them to escape every wicked plan of the enemy. We pray, oh God, that their joy will be complete as you complete them, oh God. I pray for any other married couple here that are thinking, God, are you there? God, is your word true? That today, oh God, you will prove yourself strong and mighty on their behalf as you visit their marriage, oh God. That you speak restoration and healing, oh God, over those wounds. And Father, whatever word was spoken over their lives that misconstrued their mind and understanding of who you really are in this 21st century, oh God, I pray that you will take over their lives and prove yourself strong and mighty on their behalf for the sake of your name and for the sake of your word, oh God, that they will see you once again work in their marriages, oh God, rising up above every form of darkness, oh King of glory, that seems to hover over their lives, oh God. Father, I pray that for this couple, they shall know fruitfulness that comes from you. And for the rest of the church, oh God, we just choose to commend our lives into your hands, that you will give us grace to live our lives holding on to your word as the greatest focus, oh God. In Jesus' holy name we've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for staying through this session. Um, at this time, we would like to give into the house of the Lord as one of the activities of our church practice as we get ready to come to the end of the service. Amen. We'll give in to the house of the Lord. Amen. Please Amen. feel free um, to get yourself ready to give in to the house of the Lord. But just before you come, we can just um, pray over the offerings, the tithe, and your giving. Amen. Precious Father God, we want to thank you once again for your goodness to us. We thank you for the opportunity that you give us, oh God, to give back to you. You teach us, oh God, that it's actually more blessed to give than to receive. And yet you generously keep giving to us, oh God. I want to commend these, my brothers and sisters, as they give into your house, oh God, that your God will honor them as you keep your promise to them, O oh God, that you will bless them, O oh God, that they will lack no good thing but have in abundance, O oh God. May they know an increase that comes from you. May they be taught of you, as your word has said, to make wealth, O oh God, that they will know, O oh God, an increase that comes from you, as taught by you. I pray that you'll give them the wisdom they need, the strategies, O oh God, that they need to excel in everything that they do. And for those of us, O oh God, that are not able to give today, I pray, O oh God, that again you will create another opportunity for them to be able to give at another time, oh God, because of your kindness. Father, I want to trust you that as your people give into your house, oh God, you will honor them, oh God. You will keep the devourer away from them because of your faithfulness. Father, we bless you and honor you for it's in Jesus' holy name we've prayed. Amen. 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 Friends, please feel free to come and just give into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world for oh yeah. you. his life and adornment for sin.
Friends, we'd like to bring this service to a hold. Thank you so much for your patience with us. But we are going to kindly ask in honor of our, our bride and the groom and their, and their wonderful guests that we kindly let them go out first. Anthony and Esther would like to take a picture or you're just going straight to your car. They will take the picture from outside. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yay. Okay, let's celebrate Esther and Anthony.